Hey, before I get going, please hit the subscribe button and the notification so you know when I post a new video. All right, let's get to the video. So in the past, I have talked about the bond market and how it is, it is the truth. It tells you exactly what is happening in the economic world. It is the truth meter of global economics. Why do I say that? Well, number one, it is the largest market traded on a global scale, bigger than the equity market, bigger than derivatives market. The bond market is the mega behemoth market that is traded on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's based on economic reality. Let me say that again. The bond market is based on economic reality. It is not speculation. It is not a, uh, well, I think this company is gonna do great, or I'm gonna short this company kind of situation that we see in equity markets, but rather this is true reality. It is based on economic conditions, both globally and domestically. And it can tell you so much about a company, a country, a county, a uh, municipality, a state. And I think this is where I use this information to tell me what is coming in the future. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about examples of that and how you can use the bond market as that indicator of a risk on or risk off. So let's review real quick for those who aren't really knowledgeable about bonds, how they work. Think of it as a teeter-totter. And when you were a kid, you went to the playground and you, an equal weighted friend, got on a teeter-totter. And you sat on the left and they sat on the right. And what did you do? Well, you went up while they went down and you went down when they went up. So how do bonds work? If you compare the yield and the bond value, they're like you and your friend on a teeter-totter. So when you push up, the yield goes up and the bond value goes down or your friend goes down. And inversely, when your pr friend pushes up, you go down and the bond value goes up. So that's basically how they work. So when you look at yields over, let's say, the last five years on any of your favorite bonds, you'll most likely notice, actually, go back 30 years and look at the 10-year treasury, U.S. Treasury, and look at the yields on the U.S. 10-year treasury. If you're the yield and your friend is the uh, bond value, you have been basically falling for a long, long time as your friend, the bond value, goes higher and higher. And over the last 30 years, we've seen a bull market in bond values and a bearish market in bond yields. So we're, if you go back 30 years and you look at these charts of the 10-year treasury, you'll see some major major movement in the bond values of the U.S. Treasury in that time period. All right, so in the last, I would say, five years, four years uh, since the 2016 election, there has been this constant back and forth between our president and the Federal Reserve and what they're doing with interest rates. Now, if you flash back to 2018, October or so of 2018, there was a lot of chitter chatter about what the Federal Reserve was going to do with interest rates or the Fed funds rate. And of course, our, our president was on the side of lowering interest rates to zero and making money super dirt cheap. And the reserve was on the other side of that. So vice versa, right? And so now you get into December, I believe it was December 5th of 2018, and the Federal Reserve takes a position to raise federal funds rates. And all of a sudden, the equity markets of the world 
in particular the domestic market, S&P 500, Dow Jones, and NASDAQ, all going at 20% sell-off and just tank in the month of December of 18. And what that was was a reaction to the Federal Reserve taking a position of raising interest rates. Now, what does that mean for the bond market? Well, when the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, bond values go down, meaning you and your friend are on that teeter-totter, your yield, and they're the value of the bond. You, this time, are going up, and the value of the bond is going down. So when the Federal Reserve raises or lowers interest rates, it has an inverse reaction or correlation to the bond market. And that's why you saw a major sell-off in the S&P 500 in December of 18, because the market deemed the economic environment as a slow-growing environment economically, and that to raise interest rates means you're bullish on the economic environment, and you think we're growing at a faster rate and so the market basically said, no, we don't agree. And you had a massive 20% sell-off in less than 25 days, which for anybody would scare them to death, especially if you're bound for retirement or in retirement. Because what do you do with your assets when you get closer and closer to retirement and in retirement? You become more conservative. And what have we all been taught? The bond market is the most conservative environment just short of cash, which is more uh, conservative, just a little bit more riskier than putting money in your Folgers cans, burying it in your backyard, and buying a gun, okay? So you have this environment where the market disagreed in 18 with the Federal Reserve, and then as we saw in January of 20, uh, 2019, we saw the Federal Reserve back office comments and say they were going to take a more, uh, you know, a look at it, a look and see kind of approach. And 2019, what happened? Markets rallied. I remember April, May of 19 and getting uh, the cue of look at the rest of the world outside the U.S. and look at the bond market outside the world. Well, what's the second most um, go-to bond market, uh, second to the U.S. Treasury market? German, German bond market, or, or I refer to it, the German boon, which is the 10-year German boon. At that time, we saw the 10-year German boon go to a negative interest rate yield okay or negative yield what does that mean that means people were buying up the german boon 10-year boon because they were scared they wanted liquidity and they wanted to park their money somewhere where that if something happened the market uh they could have their money in a safe place and in this case they were willing to pay a yield or interest on their money to own the German Boone asset. Now, but what these people are, were doing back in uh, April, May of 19, where they were buying the German Boone and the yield was negative, okay, that means you and your buddy, your buddy's through the roof and you're in the ground, okay? If the ground's neutral or zero, you're actually in the ground by a half a percent at this time. And what it indicated to the world was the world was not, not in belief that we were in an economic growth spurt or bullish. They were scared and they went to the most liquid conservative asset that they knew they could be protected in. And that was the, uh, the German 10-year boon and eventually the U.S. Treasury. So we saw this flight to safety and look at bonds as a flight to safety in particular the u.s treasury german boon and higher credit quality uh countries why am i telling you all this flash back to first of 2020 and in that period of time the u.s treasury 
was I, I I'm 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 ballparking here, but I believe the 30-year Treasury is just over two percent. I think two and a quarter, two and a half, and the 10-year was up near around two percent. If you look at the U.S. 10-year Treasury today, you're at I think 79 uh, basis points or uh, 0.79 of a percent, which means people have flocked to the U.S. Treasury and driving the yields down, the values up. Throw in the Federal Reserve, throw in coronavirus in March of, uh, of this year, of 2020, we had a major liquidity crisis where everything sold off. So treasuries, boons, uh, U.S. equities, uh, global equities all sold off in favor of the U.S. Treasury. We saw that step in by the Fed to support the bond market or the Treasury market, driving yields back down. And so... Yes, today, the U.S. Treasury market, it's a little bit manipulated by the Federal Reserve. But recently, we have seen in the last couple weeks where the U.S. Treasury market, uh, the 30-year Treasury has gone back up in yield, meaning the value has gone down. And same with the 10-year Treasury has gone back up in, I believe, at one point over 0.80. Okay, remember, going back during the peak of the crisis, in April, May, the 10-year Treasury was right around 0.54 of a percent. So you, you have the value of the Treasury market has started to fall. I'm bringing all this up because now we're days away from an election. We have seen in the last two weeks volatility, and I've talked about volatility a lot. Volatility has spiked. It's gotten over a in into the... Um, area where volatility is in a representing an area where you're not really wanting to buy into this market yet uh, because it's over its threshold of risk. Uh, and so the bond market, though, is really interesting because what we're seeing in the uh, 10-year treasuries, uh, U.S. domestic uh, bond market is a actually a stabilization. We're not seeing the sell-off or the fear trade that's being thrown around on the news channels about bond market or the U.S. equity markets tanking after the election. We're not seeing it in the U.S. Treasury market. Now, this could be played out by the Fed a little bit because of its manipulation in supporting of the bond market, but we're also not seeing this in corporate bond debt, so uh, triple B and above. And flashback to where we are today. We are seeing in the triple B and above, so triple B to triple A market, the bond yields and bond values are continuously continuing to show more of a bearish environment for bonds, which is inverse to the equity markets, and that would be bullish for the equity markets. We're not seeing the breakdown that we saw in Feb January and February of this year. We're not seeing the potential uh, of what we saw in April and May and June and so on in the German boon market uh, as in the U.S. equity market. So I'm looking at this bond market world, especially specifically in the more conservative flight to safety uh, assets of the U.S. treasuries as they're not showing signs of a bearish equity market. And so I use this when I couple it to my asset allocation models and when I invest into the equity market and when I look out the next 90 days. And what the bond market is telling me is that they still believe that the equity market will be bullish. Now, this could all change on Tuesday evening. But right now, it is not showing signs that we are entering a doomsday environment as the uh, talking heads on TV would actually indicate.